Do you know every single minute more than 30,000 videos are getting uploaded on YouTube? That's more than 10 million videos in a day. And each video needs to get stored, processed, searchable and delivered worldwide. That too instantly. But how? How does a video uploaded from your computer is being watched in London, Tokyo, Australia in a couple of seconds later? How your video is searchable within a couple of minutes? And how does YouTube manage to do without crashing at all? This is not just a theory. This is the real world example of world's biggest video platform. So in this video, we are going to learn about top eight component used by Google at the back end. So it's not very specific to Google. So these components are very, very popular and mainly used in most of the system design. So if you are an engineer, if you want to crack any system design or if you want to build any scalable solution, so you need to learn these eight core components to grow in your career. Now, what happens when you actually upload a video? The very first request doesn't hit the database. It doesn't go to the backend services. The very first request hit a component called API gateway. So which behave like a gatekeeper. So it will take care of certain responsibility. It will take care of the authentication, authorization part. It will take care of the security from multiple angles, be it rate limiting, be it from DDoS attack. And it will also make sure that it will redirect your request to the appropriate service. Whenever you build any application, the very first component that will come into picture is your API gateway. So think like an AP gateway is like a smart receptionist, which will identify you and will redirect to you at the appropriate department. If you want to learn system design, this is the first component that you need to gain mastery. Now we can understand billions and millions of videos are there and billions of users are there. When we have uploaded the request, we, our request will go to which server because YouTube would have so many servers who would decide that which request will go to which server. Then the second component will come into picture that would be load balancer. So load balancer is the component which basically distributes the load. It behaves like a traffic cop which will make sure the requests are evenly distributed. There is no single point of failure. So that way it has some routing rules at the back end which will make sure. So wherever you need to have this scenario where you need to handle so many requests and you have so many services at the back end that load balancer is a component for you. Now is the point when your request is hitting at the back end. So when the request is hitting at the back end you would have a web server which is behaving like a brain of the application. So it would have all the business logic. It will validate your request and then it will redirect the request to other services it will interact to databases so many things it will do and moreover web server is very very popular component in this world whatever the APIs that we are dealing whatever the operation that we do we do with the help of APIs and APIs at the back end interact with web server we need to understand that when we are uploading a video it's not a very simple task so many things are involved at the back end First, it need to be converted into certain formats because there are so many different viewers are there. So video should be viewable on mobile, on different different operating system. And then it need to be converted into an appropriate storage efficient mechanism. That means some compression could be there, transcoding could be there. We need to extract the metadata also. For that one, so many tasks are there. For this one, what we are going to use is our next component that is messaging queue. So what we are going to do is we are going to place all these different jobs into messaging queue. And at the back end, different services are listening to this messaging queue and they will do their work at the back end. So messaging queue is a component where you need to do background kind of work, where you want to do async kind of communication, where you want to improve the user experience, where you want to scale the application, then messaging queue is the component that you need to learn. So Kafka is one of the most popular tool in messaging queue that you would have heard out which is very popular in microservices, which is very popular in all this scenario. So you need to learn messaging queue. After messaging queue, our next component is database. No system can work without a database. So it may vary that in some situation, we might have to use SQL databases for structured data. In some cases, we might have to use no SQL databases for semi-structured information. So in, even in case of YouTube, now you must be thinking what kind of data that we are holding. So we need to know that we need to get the metadata. Metadata means when the video was uploaded, who uploaded that video, that user profile information, so that comes under database where we need to store this information and other than that we have semi structured information as well where let's say user is liking that video user is dropping the comment with respect to that video so that means we need to store some semi structured information as well so based on the situation we might have to use different different databases so it may happen that we must
must have to think about the unstructured data as well. So unstructured data means that something about video, something about images, thumbnail. For that one, databases are not the best choices. We have distributed storage based system, blob based storage system, something like S3, something like Azure Blob Storage or Google File System. These are the finest example of the storage distributed storage system that are being used in industry for such purpose. Now, once you are done with your data, then now your video is you know online now you could see that that video is available in london the video same video is available in uh, china the same video is available in us so how that is working how the same video is available ac across the region so that means there should be some component at the back end and that component is cdn content delivery network which will make sure what it will do is it will create different different copies across the region of a static content and whenever user will hit a request it will hit to that nearest edge server so what does it mean suppose somebody is watching that video from uh, usa then in that case that video doesn't have to go from usa to india the edge server would be placed in usa and then when the request will come the request will be redirected to the edge server and edge server will serve that request so in this case that's why the cdn plays an important role it will improve the application performance and it will improve the user experience now we talked about the video is searchable within a minute what does it mean we are able to search the video whatever has uploaded so that means there should be some entity the back end which is making sure that we have a right data structure or storage at the place in that case we use indexing based solution something like elastic search or solar which is based on the lucene what it does is they efficiently store the information in an indexing way so that search could work efficiently now to improve the other aspect of the application so now let's say you know someone is viewing my channel in that case he wants to see how many subscribers are there or how many views are there for that one it won't happen that every user which is coming onto my channel and my at the back end queries are getting hit on the database so that means some information has already been cached whenever a user is checking that information that information is available in the form of cache databases are not flooded with these queries that way the caching will play an important role and caching can place at the different different parts of the you know application now these are the eight components i'll quickly summarize what we have done in case of youtube journey so first the request will go to the whenever we uploaded the button the request will go to the api gateway it will authenticate authorize then once the request has been authenticated then since there are so many servers or services at the back end load balancer will come into picture it will redirect that request to a healthy server once that is there web server will come into picture which will parse your request which will do understand your logic validate the request in that case it will again then further talk to different services and database since upload is a complex process where we have so many things to do at the back end so that's why background kind of processing is required for that one we are using the messaging queue once messaging queue will come into picture then different different services will talk to their messaging queue and will process the data and then we have a database which will take care of the metadata which will store the data relevant information for analytic and for improving the business and then we have cdns where this the content was available all across the world and then we had to make sure that user request is not getting slowed down and user experience is not bad that's why we have placed different different edge servers and the same setting content is being deployed all across the server for searching the content we have an index based solution and for improving the performance of the frequent queries or frequent data we are using the caching so these are the eight component that you need to learn for building any kind of application that you want to do in system design thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video